I'm so excited you're joining me today for this spring pattern. This one is a lot of fun because it it's really not complicated. We're going to be making some rectangles and joining them together in a unique way uh, to create a fun and beautiful spring top that can be worn in the spring and in the summer and well into the fall, depending on how you want to layer it. Today, I will be using a size H Furls Odyssey hook in the white. You'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, and some yarn. This is the yarn I've chosen to use. It's by Wee Crochet. I love it. This is a Hawthorne fingering weight in the Mount Tabor. It's 375 yards for 100 grams. And this is a 80% superwash fine Highland wool. So the nice thing about a superwash is you don't have to worry as much if your husband accidentally decides to wash it one day, which has happened with other garments that weren't superwash and that was not so much fun. I really like the tones in this one. It's really fun for our spring theme. And let's go ahead and get started. For this video tutorial, I will be demonstrating the size small. We will first start by making two sleeves. I have already completed one of the sleeves, just so you can kind of see it here. This is a really fun stitch pattern. I think it's great for kind of this leafy type look. And it is a 10 row repeat. And it's really not tricky. I've really enjoyed working this one up. So let's get started. We're going to be creating two of these. So let's get started with our first one. I have gone ahead and caked my yarn. That's just the way I like it. I like it caked. And we are going to start on our 10 row repeat. For our very first row at when we're getting started, we will want to chain 30. So for the size small for the sleeve, we will be chaining 30. All right, now that we've chained 30, I'm going to introduce our chart here. And we're going to be starting with row one. The thing about this pattern, if you notice, I don't have any extra chain stitches going up the sides. That's because we were, we are not going to be using like a chain one on the side here or anything like that because they're really not needed. And you'll have straighter, nicer edges if we just omit any chain stitches. So every single stitch on this chart and when you work counts as a stitch working across. So in doing this, since we're not going to be chaining, I am going to start by single crocheting in the first chain from the hook. I know some directions aren't that way, but this is a really nice way to work. I am going to go ahead and mark that very first stitch with a stitch marker. I suggest you do the same, especially when we're not chaining these edges, we don't wanna miss any stitches. And where we will be creating a lace stitch, it's always such a good idea to chain the first, to mark the first and the last stitches in the row. So I am going to be following this chart. And for the first row, we are simply going to single crochet in the 30 stitches across. And now for our row two, without chaining, I'm simply turning and single crocheting in the very first stitch. I'm going to go ahead and mark that stitch. And now for our repeat for this row, I will chain one. And we are going to skip the next stitch and single crochet into the next. So it's a chain one, skip one. Oh, it's a chain one, skip one, single crochet. Chain one, skip one, single crochet. We're going to repeat that until we get to the very last stitch in the row. Now, as we get to the end, you'll notice that we have one more stitch left and we are simply going to do another single crochet into that last stitch. And now we will turn and we will be repeating row two. So that will mean we single crochet into the first stitch. I'm going to go ahead and move that stitch marker up And now we will chain one, skip one, and single crochet into that chain space. Chain one, skip one, single crochet. Repeat that across and just single crochet into that last stitch. You might have a little bit of curling going on here. Don't worry, that will block out. And especially as you build more 
um, fabric on here, it will curl less. And blocking is very key to this pattern. For row four, we are going to be single crocheting in each stitch across, being sure to move up that stitch marker so we know where we are starting and finishing each row. For row five, we're getting into the fun stuff. If you look at the chart, I've included the green spaces. These are our repeat stitches. So anything that's green is what we will repeat across because we have more stitches than what's on this chart. And I'm sure you're wondering what we do here if we're not chaining. So let me show you something that I absolutely love, which is called a stacked single crochet. So we're not using any chains, but we're going to be starting our first stitch so that we have what looks like a double crochet stitch, but it's, it's really nice. So we'll insert our hook into the first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both of the loops on the hook. So that's a single crochet, but we're not done. This extra loop right here, not extra, but this loop right here is what we want to insert our hook back into, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through both of the loops on the hook. That is a stacked single crochet. What this does for us is it creates the height that we need. And this right here is your very first stitch. So you'll want to mark it. And now we will do a double crochet, chain three, skip two and single crochet into the next, chain three, skip two, and then we are going to do a double crochet two together. And then we will double crochet into the next stitch. We'll do another double crochet two together. So that's our repeat starting from that chain three so our repeat is the chain three, skip two, single crochet, chain three, skip two, double crochet two together, double crochet and double crochet two together. We will be repeating those steps until we get to the end of this row, this last set. Now that we have eight stitches left in our row, we will do three chains, skip two, single crochet, three chains again, skip two, double crochet two together, and then double crochet into that last stitch. And that is row five. That's our first row of this like lace work. For row six, we will start with another stacked single crochet. I'm going to go ahead and place that stitch marker because sometimes as you work around these stacked single crochets, the, you don't want to go into this part of the stitch ever. You've gone too far and you're adding stitches. So it's always smart when working stack single crochets to mark that first stitch in the row. Then we're going to do a double crochet into the next, chain three, and now we're going to single crochet into this first chain three space, chain three, and then we're going to single crochet into this next chain three space and chain three. And now here's where we're starting our repeat. We're working back here in the green again. Now we will do a double crochet three together. And now we will chain three single crochet in that chain three space, chain three, 
single crochet into the next chain three space, chain three, and now we're going to do that repeat again. All right, now that we're back, now that we're down to the last two stitches in the row, we are simply going to double crochet into the last two. Oh. And now that we are to the last two stitches in the row, we are going to do a double crochet two together for those last two stitches. And that is the end of row six. Now we'll turn and start row seven. For row seven, we are going to start with a stacked single crochet. And mark that stitch. And here comes our repeat. This will be a lot of chaining for this row. We will chain three. And now in our very first chain three space from the previous row, we will single crochet, chain three, single crochet into the next chain space, chain three, single crochet into the next chain space, chain three, and then we're going to double crochet in the next double crochet spot. So there is our first repeat. You can see it's getting quite lacy. It's a lot of fun, but it's just chains and single crochets. So it's not difficult. We're going to work that towards the end of this row. All right, now I finished the repeats for this sleeve, and now I'm going to work the rest of the stitches in this row. They're very similar, so we'll chain three, single crochet in the first chain space, and chain three, and single crochet in the next chain space, and chain three, and single crochet in that next ch chain space, chain three again, and for our last stitch, it's just simply a double crochet in the last. And that is the end of row seven. We only have three rows left for this repeat. For row eight, we are going to do our first stitch as a stacked single crochet. and we're going to mark it. And then our next stitch is a double crochet into that same stitch. And now we are going to chain three, and we are going to be skipping this first set of chain stitches. We're going to skip this one, and we're going to single crochet into the next, and then chain three, single crochet into the next chain three space, chain three, and we're going to skip this last chain three space and go straight to this double crochet stitch, and we are going to do three double crochets. And this is where our repeat starts with these three double crochets. So here comes our repeat. We are going to chain three, we're going to skip this chain space and go to the next, and chain three, single crochet in the next chain three space, chain three, 
And here's where we're going to skip this last chain space and simply do three double crochets into that double crochet stitch. And I'm going to work with a repeat, continuing that repeat until I get to the last stitch in the row. And now for this last stitch in the row, I am going to do two double crochets. And there you have it. There's the end of row eight. For row nine, we're going to start this row by doing a stacked single crochet into that first stitch. And now we're going to single, or sorry, we're going to do a double crochet into the next stitch. And now we're going to chain three, and this is our repeat, the chain three. And now we're going to skip this first set of chain stitches and single crochet into the center set. And now we will chain three again. And now we're going to skip this chain three space and we're going to work into these double crochets. So we're going to do two double crochets into the next stitch. Then double crochet one, and now two double crochets. And now we'll continue on with that repeat where we chain three, skip this set of chain stitches and go to the center three chain stitches chain three and skip the next set of chain three and then we will do a two double crochet one double crochet and then two double crochet and now we'll chain three single crochet to that center chain three space, chain three, and now we will simply do a double crochet into each of the last two stitches. And that is the end of row nine. So we only have one more row left to go for this repeat. For row 10, we are going to single crochet into the first two stitches. No need to chain. These single crochets on the edges are fine without chaining. I'm going to add my stitch marker there. And for this, I'm going to chain, pull this down, we're going to chain three and then do a double crochet into the single crochet stitch from the row below, then chain two, and then we will start our repeat. So I'm going to chain three. double crochet into the single crochet stitch from below, chain two. And now our repeat is going to be single crochet into the next five stitches. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then we chain two, double crochet in the single crochet from the row below and chain two. And then we simply repeat that. And now when we get to the end, we simply single crochet into the last two. And I didn't place my stitch marker, I should have, but I'm okay. 
and now I'm back to the stitch count that we started with, which is 30 stitches. So now we just completed our first repeat. It's a 10 row repeat. For the very next row, I will simply single crochet in each of the stitches, including the chains, to get 30 stitches across. And as we keep working this up, and I want you to see the difference that blocking makes, because here is, here's this, what we just did, but look at this nicely blocked arm piece over here. It's very lovely. And we've got all of our repeats. So for the size small, let me turn it this way, we've got one repeat here, but we will need a total of five. So for the five small, you do five total repeats, the 10 row repeats, and you'll make two of these for the arms. Now for the body of this, we will be doing the same row repeat. So exactly what we did with the arm, we're using our chart and we're doing that 10 row repeat. But for the body, we will be doing 60 stitches. So simply start by chaining 60 and single crocheting in the first stitch and across. And then you're working that 10 row repeat the exact same way we did on the sleeve. It's just going to come up wider because we have more width here, more repeats. So for the size small, I'll also want you to go make two of these body pieces. So it's starting with 60 stitches, and then we are going to do six repeats. I know this looks really big and beautiful in here. We are going to be doing a total of six repeats and then blocking it to get the body. Make two of these and have two of the arms. This will be the bulk of your work and then come on back. Now that we have our rectangle pieces of fabric made, this is one of the front or backs. So it doesn't matter which one because they're both the same size. We are going to start to do some seaming to create what would be like a top. Obviously we can't wear a rectangle, but we can once we do some seaming. So I'm going to take my front and my back body pieces and I'm going to lay them out. Now notice I have them laid out where these lines are vertical. So this is the way that we will wear it. These lines will be vertical on our body. So we take our pieces of fabric and I have blocked these because our stitches are nice and open. And I highly recommend blocking before you do any seaming. It just makes it easier and it's a lot cleaner. So we'll place these on top of each other. And what we're going to do next is grab our tapestry needle and if you'd like um, your measuring tape. And we are going to seam five inches on either side of this. And then we are going to also go down the side. We're gonna skip seven inches on each side. We're creating the armhole and then we will seam the remaining amount. So I'm gonna go do that and then I will show you what it looks like. Now that we have our body, you can go ahead and try on and see what you initially think of the neckline. I tried this on and my neckline, I feel like might be a bit wide for me, so I might seem a little bit more. The nice thing about creating clothing, especially for yourself or for even a friend, is you can customize to each individual unique body. So I might go six inches on each side instead of five, but it's really whatever fits you. Now on the arms, we do want to make sure that we have seven inches here for the size small because we really need to make space for our arms. And so I've seamed, as you can see, I've seamed each side leaving space for the arm. We've seen the top shoulders leaving space for our head. So this is a really <laughs> nice garment so far. And I know I'm chuckling a little because it doesn't seem like much. I envision where this is heading and it's going to change a bit here with the next steps. We will be creating a ribbing on the bottom here. To do this, I am going down a hook. So I was working with H and now I'm going to switch to a G hook. The reason why is my waistline, as well as my arms, I'll be switching for the arm ribbing too, are very narrow. I probably need to lift more weights and beef up my arms a little, but I also accept who I am and I know that my arms and my waistline are pretty slender. So I want to make sure that this is the best fit for me. Um, you can always stick with the H hook if you want a little bit of room, if you don't want it to be too tight and decide what works best for you. You can always work up a little bit of this and then see how you're feeling about it. So to do this 
bottom part, which will be our waistline ribbing. What this will do is it will really bring it in so that the top of this has a lot of flow that will go over a little bit of that ribbing. It'll make it look a little bit more airy and, and give it some dimension. So I'm going to be starting at one of my size, just because I always kind of like to keep anything I might seem on a, a side where it's not, you know, on the middle front where it's a little bit less conspicuous. And I'm going to turn this here and I'm going to attach my yarn. Now what I will do next is I will work slip stitches all the way around the entire bottom of this body. I'm going to be doing one slip stitch per row, which means for the size small, when I'm done with this, it will be 110 slip stitches all the way around. Now, just to note, when you're slip stitching around, of course, some of these um, body edges, because they were a stacked single crochet, are a bit taller. So as you work around this, yes, it will really kind of cinch this in. It's not going to lay flat anymore once we get all these slip stitches in there, because we are, by doing 10 one slip stitch per row, so every 10 row repeat will have 10 stitches, then that will bring the body in a bit before we start doing the ribbing. It's just a bit of shaping going on here. So I'll slip stitch 110 all the way around this body. Now that I've got 110 stitches around the bottom of this body, you can see it's pulling in a bit more. This will help make it take shape. And you also notice that the fabric might have a bit more gathering, which is what we want. It puckers a little bit because we're doing this nice kind of flowy look at the at our waistline. Now, just to note, once again, if you want this to be a little bit wider, feel free to use the H hook to not have such tight tension. Um, this is definitely where you can customize. If you want to make this ribbing thicker, totally fine. That works too. So now that I have 110 stitches around here, and I just also want to note that doesn't need to be exact. I wouldn't stress over it too much. It's really just about, about one stitch per row and pulling it in a little bit. But if you're off by a few stitches, don't undo it and do it again, because this next part is not going to be contingent upon stitch counts. It's just going to be bringing it in. So to get started on doing the ribbing on the body, first I'm going to join in the back loop of my very first slip stitch. So now for this next round, we will be working in the back loops only of our slip stitches. And now I'm going to do some chains. I have chained 14 because I'm going to be work working 13 stitches across for the ribbing. So it's chaining 13 plus an additional turning chain. If you want your ribbing to be a bit thicker or thinner, feel free to make that adjustment. This is the part where it is easy to customize for your taste. Now in the second chain from the hook, I am going to slip stitch and then slip stitch into the remaining 12 so that I have a total of 13 slip stitches for row one. Now that I have 13 slip stitches for row one, I'm going to work in the back loops of the slip stitches along this bottom edge, and I'm going to slip stitch two stitches from those slip stitches on the body of the of this garment. So now two slip stitches along the body, working in the back loop, and I'm going to turn. And now working in the back loop, from now on we're only going to be working in back loops, I'm going to skip the two slip stitches from the body. So we're skipping those two slip stitches from the body, and then I'm going to slip stitch in the back loop only for the 13 stitches across.
Now that I've slip stitched in the back loop only for 13 stitches, I'm going to turn again. And now I'm simply repeating the last two steps. So the last two rows. So I will chain one. So there's my turning chain for this. And then working in the back loops only, I will slip stitch 13 stitches. And now that I've slip stitched 13, I will slip stitch two slip stitches from the body in the back loop. And just another note, when I did these slip stitches around the body, you'll notice they're wide. They're pretty wide. I didn't do them too tight and um, that's okay. I mean, really this ribbing is going to pull it together even more. And now I'm going to turn and skip the two slip stitches from the body and slip stitch in the back loop only for 13. So just keep repeating those two rows over and over, working all the way around to create a nice ribbed edge. So I'm not going to do the rest of this ribbing on camera. Obviously it takes a while. It's well worth it. And you will get very bored watching me slip stitch this many rows all the way along the bottom. But as soon as I've got all of them slip stitched, we'll come back and I will show you how to join that. But before I go work on this, I also want to take a moment and I want to talk about the sleeves a little bit more because we can also push pause on this video and do the same exact thing for the sleeves. So I'm going to put my body aside and remember our example sleeve. I'm going to pull that back out again and I'm going to grab my tapestry needle, which was here a second. Oh, there it is a second ago. Ah, I wonder if you lose tools the way I do. So I'm going to take this sleeve and we're going to do a quick seam here. I really want to show you um, how to work on this sleeve as well. So I'm going to fold these in and on these two edges, I'm simply going to seam them together. I like to line up each stitch going back and forth, kind of through those the V part of that top stitch. And we're just going to seam all the way back and forth for this sleeve. So now once again we have this nice tube, we want to make it look like this one. So take your yarn and once again starting at maybe what might be the, the seam here, so this will be hidden under the arm, you will join your yarn and slip stitch 10 stitches per pattern repeat, so one per row. So we will slip stitch 55 stitches, one per row, all the way around. And once we've done that, we will work it in the same way we're working this on the body only we're not going to do as, as tall of a ribbing. This we will chain eight, then working the second chain from the hook, slip stitch seven towards the sleeve body, slip stitch two from the sleeve body edge, turn, skip those first two stitches and slip stitch seven, turn and start again. So that is how this ends up working is this is slip stitch ribbing in seven stitches. And as you can see, it really pulls it in, but it's also still quite flexible to fit around your arm. I am going for a fitted cuff here because I really want the cuff to be able to help shape the sleeve, not only um, in terms of shaping the sleeve, but also when you're wearing it, if it's too loose, it's simply going to keep sliding down your arm. If it, if it is, I'm going to put out my arm here a little bit. See, it would slide up and down if this were my upper arm. If this is tighter, so it's on your upper arm, you can have it be tight enough to where this fabric kind of falls and poofs over it, which I really, really love. So you do want a tight fit, but obviously you don't want something too tight that it's uncomfortable to wear. So continue doing this for the sleeve and the bottom body on that ribbing, and then we'll come on back. All right, so I am back with the sleeve. I have worked the slip stitches all the way around the sleeve. So it does look like, oh, really cinched in here. But remember, this is very flexible. So now I want to show you, then this will be the same for the body. 
how to join the, the starting side and the ending side of these ribbed stitches. So I will go ahead and chain one. And now I am going to insert my hook through the back loop of my finishing edge and then also insert through the front loop of the starting edge. And then I will slip stitch those together. And I will work this all the way down all seven stitches and it joins those two edges together nicely. So working through the back loop of my working edge, the finishing edge, and through the, the loop of the starting edge. And now that I've come to the bottom of that, I can simply fasten off my yarn and weave in my end. And then my sleeve is a sleeve and my ribbing is done and it goes on your arm just nicely. And I'm really excited for the next step because pretty soon we're going to be done with this project. All right. So I've got this nice body. This is the ribbing on the bottom. Notice how it really brings that in that ribbing does. But once again, it's super stretchy. So this way it can be a bit form fitting on your body and it helps this nice poof. I like this poof at the bottom and it's really cute. So I have tried it on um, so far because I did go ahead and I sewed on one sleeve so you can see what it looks like. So simply on these openings on each side, we're going to stitch on the sleeve. What I would do is take some pins, if you have some, some sewing pins and pin it in place just to make sure it is evenly um, sewed around. It's a great idea to do. Also, be conscious of any seam you have on the sleeve so I can tell my seam is here. You really can't notice it, but I think it's always best to go ahead and try to hide any seaming. So make sure that that would be under your arm. So match up the seam to the seam on the underarm and then simply grab your needle and some thread and stitch this together the same way we stitched together with the shoulders. Um, and I guess I already did the other sleeve, but, and the sides. So we're just simply stitching this to the side and then our sleeve is attached. So go ahead and do that and then come on back. If you are like me at this point, you have tried this on to see how it's looking and it is super, super cute. So when you try it on, I want you to check your neckline and see if it's the width you like. If it's not, feel free to seam a little bit more, but just still making sure that it gets on and off your, over your head easily. Now, the last thing we're going to do is a little easy trim on the top, something kind of simplistic. What I would like to do is the reverse single crochet. If this is a little bit too fickly for you, feel free to either slip stitch or single crochet around this top edge. But I wanna walk you through the reverse single crochet. So I am going to take my yarn and join it to one of the corners. Now the thing about the reverse single crochet is we're working in reverse. We will be working from left to right instead of right to left or it's opposite for our left hand crocheters. So what I do, we go. So I'm going to attach my yarn and do a slip stitch just to get it there. Now the next step that we are going to do, and I'm going to separate this out so hopefully we can see it really well, is I'm going to insert my hook not to the left of where I joined, but to the right. So I'm going to insert my hook down into the next space to the right. Then I'm going to yarn over. I like to do a hook over for this. It's much easier pull up a loop. I have two loops on my hook and now I will yarn over and pull through those two loops. So let's do that again. We insert our hook to the right of the last stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through both of the loops on the hook. Insert to the right, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through both loops. So it's similar to a single crochet. We're just working it different in the way that we do it and we're working from left to right. But what this does is it creates a really nice finishing stitch 
Um, it's a little bit like a little thick band that goes on here, but it works out really nice for this design. I like it. It's not too much, but we know that it's there. So continue to work this stitch all the way around the neck opening. Now that we are back around, I'm simply going to fasten off and then weave in those ends. And that's it, it's done, it's ready for me to wear. I might block it a little bit more, but that first blocking I did before I did all the seaming really made the lay of this really nice. It has a really nice flow to it. It's not worked too tightly. And I hope you enjoy it as much as I do and come back for more fun projects soon.